power of now. You know, the book kind of just became such a staple in my life. You know, I've read it through, but if I'm ever having a moment of um, associating with my mind or identifying with my mind, as he says, a bit too much where everything just feels a bit too overwhelming, I'll just pick up the book, open to any page, and you know, I'm a firm believer that whatever page opens up, you know, I'm meant to read that page, you know, so I go on with that open mind. And every single sentence in there is just, it holds so much value. It's a grounding presence in my life. It's really easy for the mind to take over, for the ego to take over. So it's an ongoing process of watching your mind, but also in a neutral way. Because for me, I have struggled a lot with seeing certain thought patterns that I recognize as, I don't want to say harmful, but in ways that I don't really want to associate with, that in ways that are not uh, healthy or not associated with my true self. I tend to judge those thoughts sometimes, which I know is the mind once again, right? It's another layer. It's a lot about um, being objective, just you know, letting go and uh, being patient and loving with yourself and you know, recognizing that whatever is happening in your mind is not you, you know? It's just your mind and you're separate from it. I'm 24 years old. Uh, and born in 1997, so that makes me a Generation Z um, by definition. Um, and actually being young and trying to adopt Eckhart's teachings, at this day and age, social media is actually a really big part of my life. It's something that I find clashes quite a lot with Eckhart's teachings. Um, because, you know, as Eckhart says, even in his speeches, that, you know, what we project on social media is an image. Um, it's not rooted in the present. It's, uh, it's an image that the mind, that the ego kind of um, wants to reflect out into the world. But with that said, you know, with my work, with being a freelance uh, worker, it's something that is essential to my work in terms of uh, not only, you know, connecting with other people, but networking and marketing and, you know, finding clients and everything that comes along with building a freelance business. So it's been a, a fine line of finding that balance of personal use, of use for business and also remaining conscious while doing these activities on social media. So. It's, it's hard, to be honest, to, to be this young and to not get sucked in. It's just so prevalent in, my, um, in the collective of, of my age group. Eckhart is a person that experiences awakening you know, in an instant moment. And I think, for me, I, I see myself going through the same practice that I'm going through now, probably for the rest of my life. Um, you know, pursuing that presence and trying to disidentify from my mind. Uh, or, you know, maybe one day I'll wake up and I'll be awakened, you know, but I think, I don't think it's fair or I don't think it's very wise for people to wait for that awakening for the rest of their lives. Uh, for me, I'm, there's so much uh, power and there's so much um, benefit from pursuing it yourself consciously every day as opposed to waiting for you know an enlightenment that will you know strike you and change you for the rest of your life um, hopefully it happens for us all that's all i can say but um i'm not going to wait for it <laughs> you know I'm, I'm i'm doing the work and in a way doing the work is is the easiest thing because being present to me is easy, it's so, so, so much easier than not being present and, and fighting and resisting the past or resisting the future, you know, trying to plan obsessively the future or resisting what has happened in the past. Those things are actually quite difficult and they take a toll on you. But the easiest thing, in my opinion, to do is actually to be, to just let go and to be fully present and you know, we talk about it like it's being present is, is a really hard thing, which it is to get to that point is difficult. But once you get there, it's actually, it's smooth sailing, right? But for me, it comes in waves. Sometimes I lose it. Sometimes it comes back. Uh, it all depends. It's fleeting, you know, that consciousness. It 
it has actually taken the fear away from the idea of death. Uh, not only of you know my body, but also of the people that I love. It has um, kind of encouraged me to remain present and to to love those people in the best way that I can now, and to not you know put myself through the fear and the stress of what it might be like if I were to lose someone or to lose my own life. In a way, as he says, it's your mind doesn't know the difference between of it actually happening sometimes and it just being a thought in your mind, right? So as opposed to putting myself through those very difficult emotions of grief and fear, now I would just rather, you know, be present with those people and with myself and and give them, you know, my full attention. And the more loving and compassionate that I can be with myself and more forgiving with myself, the more I can give that love to other people. And you know, that also comes with a level of presence and non-judgment and you know, not, not also you know, projecting a specific um, expectation on that person's role in your life in a specific way. So you know, that's something I find you know, collectively, I think a lot of people, I have seen a lot of my friends and myself you know, struggle a lot with that in terms of, you know, especially when it comes to romantic relationships. You know, the, the way that, the role that somebody's meant to play in your life, I think a lot of us have, you know, certain expectations around intimacy and around love and around, you know, romance in, in a way. So for me, it's an ongoing process of presence and detaching a certain expectation of the future. And, you know, Eckhart always says that, you know, an idea of something being forever is is only the mind's you know creation and I think a lot of us struggle a lot with that and you know when we when we meet someone a friend or a romantic partner or a business partner we, we we have all these expectations of the future of that person's role in our lives which actually takes us away from fully being present with them now and just really embracing that interaction um, you know in and of itself and you know just going with the flow as every moment, you know, um, presents itself, you know, just being in that moment. So it's difficult, especially when, you know, this conscious work around relationships is a two-way street. So for me, I find that if the person that I am in a relationship with, in a friendship with, whatever it might be, if they are also on this journey of, being more connected to themselves and to the present moment and honesty and love and you know they're on a similar journey as I um, I find that the relationship has more potential to you know flourish and um, and to grow and it allows for more presence in that moment however if it's a more unconscious relationship you know on my part or on the other part the mind can just do so many things it's a process, it's a long one, but you know, I'm, I'm willing to do the work and yeah, keep going.